I was expecting you to be one of the judges at the next thing, the competition. I'll probably, I'll probably judge towards the end. Mm. You know, so, and I can't really do so many things. I can't be here CEO then. <laughs> you have to give other jobs to people. True, I like just that. Like, just just like delegate. Not, yeah, <laughs> just like I'm not emceeing that much anymore. You know, you can't, no matter how good you are at something, you can't always be, you want to be in the front line. Mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes just, just take a chill back and just mentor some people. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't anyone you can't mentor in? I mentor a lot of people. For real? Yeah. But how come they don't put it out there? If I had a mentor like you, put it out there like Kate is the one teaching me this. I, I, I think they do. They just not loud enough about it, and <laughs> and I don't think it's really necessary. It's not like when you do something, you have to <laughs> you have to put it out there. Yeah, scream on top of your voice, and mm. you know, so maybe when I'm no more, then it's like, oh, you actually, oh, really, you too, oh, ah, okay. Have <laughs> we, we started the interview? Yeah, we started. Oh, for real? <laughs> that's how you started. <laughs> Okay, guys. I, I thought this was like a back. <laughs> no, we actually started it okay. like a unique way. Yeah. <laughs> guys, welcome to the ZMB Talks. Uh, we'll be your girl EDNA. As you can see, I'm with the man, mm -hmm. the CEO of Nexus Music Entertainment, mm -hmm. KB, Killer Beats. Mm -hmm. Most of us know him from his diary stations. Mm -hmm. He's a producer. <clears throat> what happened to Kami? Well, before we get to Kami, so. And this is funny, I used to tell my friends when I was on radio, uh -huh. so I had like a different fan base. So there are people that just specifically knew me for radio, uh -huh. and there were those that knew me for my music production. Uh -huh. So it was funny because the ones that knew me, like the people in the outskirts that didn't have access to radio, uh -huh. just knew KB as a KB producer. Okay, so I had like a different fan base that knew me for that then i had also like a little fan base that knew me as an actor mm -hmm. and there are those that knew that i did all those things so now when i think about it, it's like okay and what's your advantage yeah, that you know? was actually cool because you can tap into this 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 yeah. and that and you still have like a bigger market so every time i meet somebody it's like where did this person know me from like oh yeah tv i was like oh okay this one, oh, music producer. Mm. This one, oh, yeah, radio but now radio is starting to forget because mm. I, i've been off radio for and acting hour. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to do as much acting as possible. As you can see, I've got a very, uh, very demanding job. And mm. acting also is very demanding, mm -hmm. you know, so if, especially if you're like in a series or whatever. Yeah, you sure. Know, shooting sometimes will take the whole day. The whole day and I don't think I'm going to have that time to, you know, but that ideally before I, I, I came to Nexus, that's mm -hmm. something that I thought about. I thought I was probably just going to resign and probably do a bit more acting mm. but obviously i wanted to step it up a little bit mm. you know i had my eyes on bigger things i was eyeing something like on netflix or something mm. you know since you talked about re uh, resigning yeah this i don't remember what <coughs> event that was yeah but you said something like i just want to stay back from the music yeah. i just went you know to yeah. relax yeah but then i was surprised i'm yeah. like oh yeah. Here's another position. Yeah, I mean, this this happened. So, so when I was doing when I was doing my my last Daz album, so um, I, in that moment, I, I I felt like I did everything there was to do mm -hmm. in, in the in the music industry. Um, it gets to a point. You ask anybody that has been in the business for a long time, it mm -hmm. gets to a point where now you start to feel like there's so many reputations. Yeah. You know, like you're doing the same thing year in, year yes. out, you know. Uh, not that you're running out of creativity. Obviously, creativity will never entirely run out. And for the kind of music that I've done, mm -hmm. I've managed to sustain myself for a very long period yeah. of time. But it's like football. You get to a certain age where you just get tired, you know. Not that you, you're falling out of love with what you do, mm -hmm. but you just feel like, yeah, I want to do less and less mm -hmm. of, you know, this. Like, even now, I'm not as active as I used to be. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in my first... Uh, five years, I'd spend the whole day at the studio. Mm. Then the last five years, if I spend like three hours in the studio, that's a lot of time. Yeah. So in a day, I'll probably spend like two hours. Two so hours. I'll specifically go to do something, yeah. then I'm out. So I started spending less, less, less time. Mm. And you know, like for a creative, if you want to be really creative, you have to spend so many hours doing something. But obviously you have sure. to look at the business aspect of it. I've got a family that is growing. My firstborn son is about to get in uni. Hey, you know what I'm how saying? do you so, feel? I mean, I, I feel good. He's turning 17 you don't this feel old. year. I feel old. <laughs> though I look young, though. I, mean, I still get a lot of people like, you got a 17 year old, uh -huh. but you look 30 or you look 29. I'm like, I'm almost 40 years old. Uh, what are you true. talking about? You know, so. 
Wow. Yeah, so th- that was my thought process. You know, you feel like you're growing old and um, now you're becoming more business minded. You need mm-hmm. to settle down. I don't mm-hmm. want to get to 40 and I'm still running up and yeah. down. And I, I don't want to go through that struggle. I want to, by the time I'm getting to 40, I'm all properly settled. You know what yes, I'm saying? Okay. I, I, yeah, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like my investments are just bringing in whatever mm. is bringing in and um, I'm just relaxing. I, I don't mm. want to do nothing hectic after 40 years old. So what nice. then happened is that I said I'm resigning, mm-hmm. not resigning per se. I was like, I was, I was not going to immediately stop what I was doing at that time. So what was going to happen then was I was slowly going to transition out. Like, so that was my last album, mm-hmm. but then I'd signed AC to the record label. So mm. my next project was like, I was going to make AC's music mm-hmm. and I was going to do a few more things then in two years and just slowly just pew. Mm. Yeah, so it was going to be like a gradual transition. It was yeah. like, done, done, that's done, it. Done, that's it. Okay, yeah, I, so, feel yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Nice. And the first time we saw the appointment on Facebook to say, you know, CEO of Nexus, yeah. a lot of people ask questions like, oh, what's going to happen to KM K- 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 now? Okay, that's that's a good question. And um, I'll try to answer that. I'll give you an example. Okay. Jay-Z had Rockefeller, right? Mm-hmm. And he was the president of Def Jam. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Nexus is a record label. Okay. Kami is a studio. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? I oh, mean, okay. In a way, it was more or less like a record label. Yes. But the because muscle that Nexus, artists, yeah, I was signing right? artists, and like the first time I signed Judy, I did everything. You know, like you invest in it. You know, mm-hmm. pay for videos. You mm-hmm. do all that sort of mm-hmm. thing, and you expect some return in the end. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, our music industry then was kind of young and you yeah, know, yeah. it was hard for us to return money and so so it was then I sort of changed my deal policy with the artist mm-hmm. that I'll not disclose because everybody's got a way that they do it so yeah. I changed the policy and it, it started to work for me differently mm. so the artists will be signed on the, under the record label but they can always go find external managers that will mm-hmm. come in and invest do videos mm-hmm. but I still find a way to make my money through the music that I was doing mm-hmm. so KME is a studio. Okay. It's signing artists and it's running. It's running independently. Who's running KME right I'm now? I'm still running KME. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean that if I'm here, then I'm not running it. I still mm-hmm. have people like Big Busy that is still, I still, you know, find time to go to the studio. I mean, I, obviously during the week, I'm very busy, mm-hmm. but whatever I need to do, I can go do over the weekend. It's just that now I'm less active. And mm. like I said, after doing my album, I wasn't going to do much after that. Yeah. You know, because my album kept me busy. So now I'm just, and there's nothing much to do really. You know, so the other jobs have been handled by Big Busy and my mm. other people. So as we speak right now, I'm working on the Tice album. Mm. We're almost done with the Tice album. Nice. Um, AC's album is almost done, but AC, I brought AC. Like I How moved come AC. I don't know AC. Yeah, because we haven't. Uh, we 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 actually made an announcement recently. So people have been asking, but we have some upcoming artists that we've spotted that I've handpicked myself mm. and you know brought on regular label. So mm-hmm. AC also is pretty much. Um, halfway mm-hmm. through his album and he's you start to listen to the music uh, you know as, as the time goes by okay. so yeah so all those are projects that are still happening okay. so this is now KB running Nexus, Nexus record label that assigned artists from all parts you know like from different parts and you know just brought in together mm-hmm. and um, they've been offered um, things that will make it comfortable for them to work. Mm. And, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, obviously the vision of the owner is just bigger than the money. Mm-hmm. You know, his vision is to see a music industry go to the next level, obviously. True. You know what I'm saying? True. I mean, we look at other countries and see what they're doing. It's like, wow, mm. why can't we do the same? Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, that's that's the vision, obviously. All right. So before I actually get a signing of the artist, eh? yeah. some people think Nexus is a new record label. They do not have an idea to say it was in existence, but then you yeah. guys went quiet and now you're back. Yeah. What's the whole reason of coming back, KB? Well, that's not me. I mean, I was employed to come and <laughs> just run it. So the the owner of the record label would have been the best person to, to ask, ask, like, oh, what's that? But okay. Yeah, but I have a brief history. So Nexus has been around for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So Nexus, if you didn't know, Nexus was, I don't know, I don't know if you're around. This is like over 20 years ago. This is like 2003, the Nexus compilation, the Nexus that gave birth to Alubusu's, yeah, um, Panyumba, Nexus that discovered Mampi, Mm. Rough kid, Angela you know what I'm Nirenda. Angela and Yorenda. So, exactly. So this is the nexus that brought all these artists. So um 
so the the owner was running the company then there was some stuff that happened at the time and you know he decided eh, mm. you know let me go out and do something else then he went did some other businesses mm -hmm. and became successful made money mm -hmm. and he still had the passion for the music mm -hmm. he had lost a bit of touch with the music but he started because he he really understands the music he started to mm -hmm. listen to the music again mm -hmm. and the passion came back and he decided you know what I, i'm gonna reinvest into this business and I'm going to put the team together and we're mm -hmm. going to see what we can do from there. So that's exactly what's happening now. Mm. So now we're trying to, I mean, we, we're going to learn, we're going to make some mistakes and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, I tell you for the fact that it's, it's, it's something that is going to benefit a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. us, you know, and, and now people look at us differently because you can tell somebody and say, what do you do? I say I'm the CEO of of, of Nexus Music. <laughs> and it's a proper job, and you mm. know what I'm saying. The proper structures, even the artists. You know, you mm. put respect on that because the artists are on salaries. The artists, you know, have um, proper conditions that you know help them work without headache. You know, most of the times, like an artist is working and he's got stress. Mm. He's thinking about I don't have money to pay my rent. Yeah, and, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How and, am I going to get money to you know, get a exactly. teacher from this person? Exactly. But yeah. you, you as an artist, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. All you need to do is just to bring your talent. Yes. We'll harness it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do what we have to do mm -hmm. and make money off that. We're mm. not going to make our money now. This is like a long-term, mm. it's a long-term investment. We have to be patient with it. Okay. And obviously we have like a bigger picture. We're looking at it from a from a big picture perspective so mm. yeah okay you talked about harnessing talent right mm. and a lot of people are talking on, i'm just a mouthpiece guys yeah. <laughs> i'm coming here as a mouth, mouthpiece kb so now the thing is when we saw the artists that you signed it's like oh these guys are really established mm -hmm. okay and we've seen what they can do we've seen what they've done before so what criteria were you guys using to pick your, your artists or rather what criteria do you uh, use to pick fresh talent out there? Okay, so when you're starting a business, when mm -hmm. you're starting a fresh business, what's the first thing that comes to mind? How are you going to make the money? Exactly. You want to sustain that business. Yes. Otherwise, if, if, if you don't do a sustainable business, mm -hmm. you're going to close it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I know a lot of people say you have to start from ground under. Mm -hmm. That's what I from K Army have done all my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I started K Army, I didn't start with any established artist. Mm -hmm. That's my history background. I started with Judy that nobody knew at the time. Mm -hmm. I got Alpha when nobody, well, he was at no intro, but he had not really made no significant, he kind of blew up when he came to K Army. Mm -hmm. Same with T-Shot, same with Tice, same with J Cash, mm -hmm. you know, same with Neo. Mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of all these artists are artists that we started off from scratch, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And that will continue. But Nexus comes in and sees an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you are starting, you are mm -hmm. starting. Obviously you have to build that foundation from the already established artists that are there. Obviously, as, as time goes by, that's why we have the audition. We are gonna yeah. continue recruiting people coming on and whatnot. So we see an opportunity. We're gonna come and get Sheffy, we get Afonika, we get Tishon. We know we're getting these guys that Yes, they established, they can stand on their own, but they still need a record label at the end of the day. Of course, they're going to do shows and make money and they'll be able to find their own videos and whatnot, but what Nexus is going to do for them, they can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an extra incentive that will help them even grow bigger from what they are. Mm -hmm. These are just artists that have made it big here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the reason why these big record labels are coming in is to try and ensure that we just don't make an impact here, but obviously, take it outside mm. that is very important so the once your numbers global. grow once your numbers grow imagine you know Sheffy becoming a big household name in at least even 15 African countries you know what that does for us or what that does for the industry back home it kind of opens up a lot of other you know doors for artists to also come in because oh these guys come on like just like how Roberto has been able to kind of open some of these doors and you know, with another, well, I know that you know some of these artists are big in some of these surrounding countries, mm -hmm. but I'm talking big like Diamond Platinum, for example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You start to do those numbers, you know, you even start to make even more money. People like WizKids and the Davidos, they're still getting you know signed to big record labels mm -hmm. when they're already established. Mm -hmm. So I, I know people say, oh, what criteria are you using instead of going to get fresh talent yeah. and. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all these big artists still get signed at the end of the day, mm. and the fresh talent have to be patient. Mm. You know, and and you're not you're not just gonna get signed because you just started 
A lot of people have gone through so many things for them to get to where they are. You have to earn it. I like what you said. Whiskey is established, but he still signed yeah. to major record label. Of course. So meaning Nexus is like the big record label that yes. Zambians have been wanting of for course. a very long time. One hundred percent. Okay. One hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the thing is, these days, uh, in as much as record labels are important, yeah. I feel the internet has made things easier. <clears throat> you know, those days it's really hard for people to get radio play because you need to, you know, have connections and everything like that. Uh. But then now it's because of the internet, things are easier. I can post my music on, on, on social media, people vibe to it. Yeah. But then being signed to Nexus, what resources do you have for your artists? You have all the resources at your disposal. Like. You, you sign to the you, everything. You get paid, like I told you. You get a month. You, you are basically working for the company. It's like a formal job. It's, it's like, like a full-time job. It's like you're an accountant. You go, it's a full-time job. You're getting a salary at the end of the month that helps you not to have any headache. Mm -hmm. You're getting allowances mm -hmm. and you're getting everything you need. We have got budgets for videos, for music, for everything, promotions, everything. Mm. You have that budget and that helps you. Are you going to get that on the internet? <laughs> Obviously, when you guys hear that, you're like, oh, I think we need this act. So let's sign them. <laughs> okay, so, no. yeah. So, okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thought process. So okay. coming in and just making artists comfortable so they can work in a very good environment. Mm. We've never had that type of situation in this country. I mean, artists dependent on on doing shows for them to make money. If you don't do a show, you don't make money, you don't mm. pay your rent. And with the COVID that hit us badly, if you didn't have these incentives, then you don't, you know, Mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. don't get around I feel you you know so but if you have all these incentives it, it makes it easy for you to work it makes it easy to say you know what mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go to the studio record without really having headache because if, if you don't have money to pay rent you're thinking ah I can't record this because I have to go hustle yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying I we, we wanted that out we've done our research you know we know how it works in other countries some of these people are just picked up by people that have got money and just say listen you are an artist, I want you to concentrate on your music. Yeah. You know, because that's that's what you're good at. And that's how it is. We actually. don't want you to go hustle, we don't want you to go so sell shoes mm -hmm. or we just want you to be focused, you know, mm -hmm. be in that creative space. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Okay, mm -hmm. I need this, this is okay, cool, I'll pay you. I'm giving you this amount of money so you don't have to stress about anything. You know, whenever you blow, it doesn't matter when you're gonna blow, you're gonna return that money, or even if you don't, it's okay. I just wanna mm -hmm. see this industry grow. Because what happens then is that when that guy becomes big, he's going to create employment chain. That guy's going to have a DJ, he's going to have a PR guy, he's going to... So you, incre you create an employment for other people and that chain continues. Mm -hmm. So if Nexus becomes, if Nexus is big, then it means that I can get um, other people employed. People like you can get a job. I can hire you to come and do something and you make money out of that. Mm. So it's, it's a chain that continues that way. So you have to look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So this has created a lot of employment, not just for the artists, but just, you know, the people close to that. So people like, for example, people in, in promotion, you know, mm. people like Manager Jedi.io, people like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like all these people. And some know, management, right? Exactly. Management. So all these people are going to get something in, in, in return. So. I think it's, it's, it's a win for the industry and people should rejoice and be happy about it. Mm. Unfortunately, you can't sign the whole world. I true. Mean, that's how, it's that's like, true. And I always say, it's like even in, in, in a football game, you know, Zambia's got over 18, what, 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 what's the latest census numbers? I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's just say 18 million people. Only 11 people play for the football team. But we all get behind them and support. But there's hundreds and hundreds of people that want to make it in that team. Mm -hmm. People that feel like, you know what? I think I'm supposed to be in that team. Yeah. But there's a selection process, unfortunately. You have to wait for your time or you have to work hard for you to get into that system. I like that you, you, came, up with, you came up with the word selection process. Yeah. We have a lot of artists in this Of course. Country. And there's a lot of people I like to sign, to be honest. Yes, but why, why did you go with these ones that we are seeing now? Why did they go with the ones that are there then? <laughs> So you're telling me that the ones that we have are not good enough? No, they are good enough. Exactly but my what, point. How? <laughs> it's, it's the same thought process. Yes, there are so many other people that would like to sign, but we can't sign everybody at the same time. Mm. You know, we're just going to say, okay, you know what? Afnika, you know. Mm. Yeah. But we can also, okay, let's go with Afnika now. And, you know, obviously, you know, we'll continue to... But also, I always say, like, this is now an opportunity for artists to position themselves properly. Because now it's a business. It's like, it's the same thing, and I'll give an example of football. There are scouts out there that, you know, will go watch my small clubs and, you know, just scouting 
potential, scouting players with potential and just, mm -hmm. oh, you know, that, that plays for the future. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that's how they scout in football. It's okay. the same thing with us. Like, we, we obviously have our eyes on the ground. We are looking at like, okay, that guy is coming up pretty good. Okay, that I, guy can, is coming I can up attest pretty good. to that. Because it's like Auchan and Ake, you know. Yeah, they just like met, Yeah, they made themselves hot property. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like that girl you've been admiring is like, I just have to have this, you know what I'm saying? And you know, yeah. and you go because, because they position themselves properly. Mm -hmm. And that can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Instead of crying for a record deal, put yourself in a position, just work. You know, you have to continue, you have to continue putting in the work because Nobody's gonna sign anybody on PT or just because oh you an artist you're gonna get signed. It doesn't work like that. You have to actually put in the work. Mm. Then we we'll see like oh okay you know what we can do something like if we just polish up this one we can make a bit of some money and you know I think he deserves to be on a record label. Then we bring mm. you on. Okay, yeah. nice. So your job as Nexus really is just to serve the public with good music. Um, you also mentioned something like trying to take this music industry on that international platform. But then what happens, I know you're really patient with artists, yeah. but what happens when... An artist this, doesn't blow up. Yes, they don't, reach, they don't reach your expectations. What's going to happen now? In any business, you have to um, expect some losses. You will never have a business that's going to be, that will function 100% fully. It's like even when you get into the chicken business, you have to anticipate that there might be an outbreak of a disease and some chickens will die. You might make a bit of some losses. Uh, maybe on this batch you sell all the chickens without mm -hmm. any problem. The next one you're gonna, you know, encounter some losses. You have to anticipate all that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, when you're starting, your anticipation is high. Like, it's gonna happen. I've signed some people that I thought in the next one year this is gonna be the biggest artist, and I'm still there waiting. J Cash is 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 a prime example. I waited for J Cash to become a big artist. I mean, for like four years, four five years before he had his first hit. Mm. But it's just patient sometimes. You have to be very patient. You have to be patient. Sometimes it's not like they're not good enough. It's just maybe they haven't just put out the right material. Mm -hmm. But for some, it's like people just don't gravitate to them. People just don't accept their sound. And mm. you, know, you end up just realizing like maybe this wasn't meant to be. But you mm -hmm. have to be a little patient. This music business takes a bit of some time. It's mm -hmm. not like a one-year thing. It would take two, three, four years sometimes for it to happen. It's like even Nexus, we're just here. We've just been here a couple of months. Yeah. Like I've been here like just a couple of months. So is, is you don't expect magic just to happen with me. <laughs> is that why you're giving them five album deals? Yeah. yeah. You have to. I mean, you're giving somebody one album deal. You're just scratching the surface. You know, what are you going to get out of? It's nothing. By the time you get into the third, fourth album, now it's like okay now it's happening mm. now we're starting to you know because nice. the focus is we're not thinking now we're thinking the next five years you know that's our projection mm -hmm. where are we going to be in the next five years you know mm -hmm. that's basically how we're looking at this business okay yeah. nice um i was telling my friend the other day i'm like you know what if I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, I did mention this with Roxa as well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, for Zambia music to grow, mm -hmm. we also need to take the music out of the clubs. Mm -hmm. All the time when you have an album launch, you want to take it to Hollywood City. You know, yes. the people who really want to support the music, yeah. but because of the location, yeah. they're unable to do so. Mm -hmm. So, what have you put in place for artists, tours, you know, how are you going to be reaching out to people in Sulawesi? We need, we need more of that. Okay, so I can't disclose so much, but like I said, um, the company is is definitely looking into that. Like even when you see from the auditions, the auditions are countrywide. Mm -hmm. So that tells you already that we have plans to reach, you know, every part of the country in terms of obviously distributing our music. We're planning to have um, stores that are going to have our music and merchandise that people mm. can access. So it's going to be a pretty much fully fledged business. So we should expect that. Yeah, of course, I can't disclose so much because everything is, in, is, is, is happening in the background and it's a process. And, you know, we have to process that first and mm -hmm. then we can come out and just say, okay, cool, this is what we're working on. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. And you can get this here or get that. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's a plan. We're just not looking at Lusaka. And a prime example, like I said, is auditions. The auditions are countrywide. So from you go to the Copper Belt and you go to Southern Province, Eastern Province, you know, so that nobody's left out. Mm, nice. I'm looking forward to that, guys. Auditions yeah. are up and running. In case you don't know, it's only 100 quacha yeah. for... But why, why are you charging? Well, everywhere you go, you have to put a little, a little cover charge for control and just... Um, and, and when you think about it, that 100 quacha doesn't really... 
it won't do nothing for for Nexus to be honest because obviously <laughs> no let's just be honest because obviously um what you're putting in is it doesn't even scratch the surface really oh okay it, it probably maybe gas money for friends to be honest so um <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> Okay. <laughs> They're winning. I mean, the, the winner is walking away with a deal worth one million. One million kwacha. kwacha. Walking away with a car. Mm, brand new. So tell rackets. me, if you equate the hundred kwacha, mm. you know, like even when you get, even if, even when we audition, just hypothetically, even if we audition um, one thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, hypothetically speaking, yeah, you know, you still want. Okay. You know. Yeah. That's so me. yeah, it's just a little. I don't think the company needs that money per se. Mm. You know, um, it's just pretty much for control. For really. control, yeah. preventing every Jim and Jack. I, I don't want to say Jim and Jack. <laughs> I think that's 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 a heavy word to use um, <laughs> because I think if you just kept it open, everybody's everybody's you won't be able to control. Mm. Everybody, everybody will just come and everybody want to audition. So you need a bit of control. Nice, because you're not gonna say, oh no, you're not going to like. But but why are you discriminating? But if you put a cover charge, then you know that the people that are paying, they want to come and, you know, you sort of have some sort of control. Mm, okay. Mm. Interesting. So um, the industry is also growing when it comes to live performances. Yeah. Very few artists are able to perform live in mm. Zambia. Even in Joy, you're like, okay, yeah, that was a brilliant, brilliant performance. I don't think that's true. Very few people do that. I don't think that is true. I'm I've, telling you, Gabe. I've, I've been in the industry for a very long for time. For real? Let, let, me, let me tell you what the problem is. Okay, give me... F okay, where's the problem? Uh, no, no, I ask let, you let, let five me, names no, 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 that actually me, perform. Let me give you first the problem. Okay. And then I can tell you, mm -hmm. you know, the facts. Number one, mm -hmm. promoters, all these people that are hiring these artists don't want to pay artists enough money for them to bring a band it's because they don't deliver let me tell you no that's not true for real not everybody that is willing to put up the money if you go to someone like oh we're on performance like okay cool this is my charge for live performance and this is my charge for like oh we're just gonna go with the playback mm -hmm. most of the times most of the times they, they'll rather go with the playback than go with the live performance i know a lot of people that can do live performances people but why don't you the, tell them to say no it's strictly live performances somebody comes and say this is i'm hiring you but i i don't want to pay for live performances i want to hire you for just you know and you need the money what, okay. what are you going to do so now it's not it's not the artists it's no. the promoters and the audience yeah it's the promoters it's the it's the promoters that say listen we can't pay you that amount because your band there's five people in the band and you know it's it's just it's it's tedious that you can't charge the same amount for playback and when you're having a band because you have a whole band that you need to pay you need to rehearse and that is time you know and the money is like 10 15 20 times more than what you would charge if you're performing a playback because playback is just it's playback because that's what people are paying in my okay. days in my days there were more live performances than it is now so mm -hmm. people like peterson let's take it back so people like peterson danny kaya uh the hamoas you know all these used to do a lot of live performances and you know with time that time just goes on because it's digital and you know some people just like it's fine we can you know, we can just do playback. But I know of these other big shows like the Stand Big Festive, mm -hmm. you know, it's strictly live. It's strictly live music. So I know a lot of people that can do live. Some seem like they can't do live because they haven't done a lot of practices. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like if you can sing as an artist, then you can do it. It's just that most of these artists just don't practice live because they're used to always performing playback and that's always there. So when they try to sing live, you know, they miss some notes and because they haven't really just practiced as much. Yes, I know that there's some artists that can't perform live. It's like all over the world. There's some big artists that I know that can't perform live. Big acclaimed artists. I don't want to mention them. Like huge artists, like huge American artists that can't perform live. They can't to save it, to save their life. So in short, uh, the ability to perform live is not really a factor you guys are looking for when, when it comes to signing. It's time. money. So it's not even about the, the, the stage appearance. It's just the good music that they put out in the studio. Well, that's the first thing that gets you signed, first of all. Can you really sing? Because as, as, you know, as, as, a, as, as, as a music producer for a long time, I mean, mm -hmm. I can listen to somebody and say, like, this person can actually sing. Mm -hmm. Whether they can sing live or not, that's something now that you can, you can work on. You know, people mm -hmm. learn these things. I know a lot of people that learned, you know, and if that's what thing you want to do, you can start to teach them and they can get better with time. Even some of the big Nigerian artists can't really sing live to save their life. 
you've heard, you know, we don't want to mention names, <laughs> but they're still big anyway. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm trying to say? So for me, that's not the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of people that can perform live and I know a lot of people that can't genuinely perform live because they rely heavily on auto-tune. Do you know why I say that? Yeah. Well, now I know it's the promoters, not the artists themselves, because I'm like, why should I pay for this performance if I know that Because your promoter doesn't want to pay. You know, I know people like Bobby want to perform live. Mm -hmm. And I've watched him perform live. Even I've, I've seen Tisha perform live. He's very really good. good. But he's most of the times good. he's doing playbacks because the promoter doesn't have money. Because when 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 you come to me with with saying I you know I give you two quotations. I will give you a quotation for playback and I will give you for live. Mm. You know. Then when you look at for the, I was like, oh man, this is too much money, and I don't want to go through that process. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Pay this guy fifty thousand. I'd rather pay him twelve thousand to do a playback. Fifty twelve. It's okay. Just do playback. You see where the thought process is? Mm. And that's where the problem is. Because the promoter is saying, ah, I don't think I'll make a lot of money. So it's just, let's just go with the new. As a fan, it's like, oh, no, but I prefer these guys to perform live. But, mm. you know, the promo it's the promoter. Okay. I don't think it's got anything to do with the artist. Maybe there's some artists that have, I, I don't know. Maybe there's some artists that have said no, but I don't, I don't think there's any artist that's going to refuse mm -hmm. a 50 pin to perform with a live band and take a 12 pin to do playback. Unless mm. you really, really are that terrible. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now I know. <laughs> See why I had. I wanted to have this conversation with you. I'm yeah. learning something now. It's not the artist. <laughs> no, it's but the I promoters. can also learn from you. <laughs> Okay, um, let me give an example of a record label like Ambitious Records. You've heard of Ambitious Records, right? Where there's empty. Yeah, and he I was the next, there, he left. I think I know the next question. What's, what's the next question? sign upcoming artist? No, no. <laughs> well, maybe it is my next question. Yeah, I'm listening. So, um, people think you guys are just timid, like you're scared to bring a fresh act, someone we've never heard of. So, besides the auditions and coming up with a winner, should we expect another fresh artist from like Nexus? I told you, there's AC. AC is with KME. Okay, yeah, yeah he's, he's with Nexus now. Oh, he's with Nexus now. There's Zavin. Oh, now you've put Zavin. I mean, we heard Zavin before well, getting she, signed. Well, she still is. Zavin is not yet standing on her two feet. But you at know. least she has a fan base. Well, well, you, you heard her on, on a Y Celeb song. She's, well, my point is that she's coming up. She's not, she's not established per se. She still mm. is mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and coming. She doesn't, uh, she hasn't gotten to a stage where she's standing on her two feet. Now she is getting to that point because she's on a label that is going to help her do what she needs to do, you know, mm. help her with her music videos and, you know, whatever the situation. But what I'm trying to say is that all these are up and coming artists, you know, so we're not close to ideas of getting potential and it's just and it's just a start you know so apart from the audition obviously we have our eyes on the ground mm. but because now we've made so many signings mm -hmm. so you can't just continue to just keep signing artists mm -hmm. obviously you need to have a plan mm -hmm. but you see the plan is there so mm -hmm. there's a rollout plan so right after this obviously you know apart from the auditions we're still scouting there's still some people that we want to we still want to bring in fresh because you need to keep you need to keep the, the label fresh. And, you know, people get tired of the same old thing. People want fresh things. Mm -hmm. So that is coming in. That mm -hmm. is definitely coming in. So obviously, that's the direction that we're going to take from there. Like mm -hmm. I said, the company needs to sustain itself. We started, we saw an opportunity to sign some of these established artists, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the reason why you know of Nexus because of, you know, what we have. Because if we just start, you know. But like I said, I gave an example of Kami. I've done that predominantly all my life, basically. But, you know, now this is a bigger record label that is saying, listen, we can do this, we can get this here, we can get that. And, you know, so the next stage is these artists have already established themselves here. Why don't we take them out there and, you know, let them have a bigger fan base? All righty. Yeah. Interesting. So before we wrap it up, um, I've seen you guys are really working hard in terms of music videos, mm -hmm. giving us music videos every week. So besides international collaborations and music videos, any other means of promoting these other artists? In terms of what? What do you mean exactly? So apart, so you're saying apart from music and what else are we trying to do? Yeah, what else are you trying to do? I think I've been telling you this the whole interview. Like, But I just want you to lay it down now. It's, it's everything. It's a full package. Like I said, I mean, um, artists are getting very good incentives. So it's not just... Um, um, I mean, I, I don't want to say so much, but I can guarantee you that every artist that is here is very happy. They are very comfortable. And um, like I said, there are other businesses that are related to the artists that are coming up. So it's not just mm. going to be the music, you know, we're going to do merchandise, 
you know what I'm saying? So there's going to be merchandising. Mm. But like I said, this is these are things that we're planning in the background that I don't want to. Are you guys Exactly. For that? Obviously, come mm. on. We're just a few months in it. You know mm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. obviously, we need to roll out our plans. We need to mm -hmm. have our videos out. Mm -hmm. So you need to say, oh, after one year, okay, this is what we've done. You know, we've done quality videos. We've mm. done this. We've done collabs with so 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 we've done mm -hmm. this we've done that you know what i'm saying festivals mm -hmm. you know all these things so we we're planning to basically get into the whole shenanigans you know like the whole entertainment you know thing is mm -hmm. going to be included in our plans you know so it's just going to be like a rollout as time goes by so we'll be rolling out all these things we can't just do everything at the same time so we okay. can't just say oh apa, mina, apache, bang. everything no? <laughs> everything has to happen systematically all right yeah. thank you so much kb i really appreciate you just finding time to sit yeah. down and talk to me mm -hmm. because i've been seeing a lot of questions online i've been yeah. seeing people you know and i'm responded, kind of getting and, frustrated yeah, and, and, and what's happening you guys are looking at us so yeah, yeah, yeah. let I'm, me find I mean, out we've been dealing with this for a very long time and i always say this and for me it it I think also because of the internet age, mm -hmm. um, upcoming artists of like 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and now it's totally different. What's Those the back difference? In the, well, the difference is because then there was no social media, so you not hear anybody complaining. Mm -hmm. They were actually <laughs> hustle until they made it. Mm. And those that really wanted something, they made it. And I always say, you know, if you want something, you're going to make it, you know. And, and like I say, you don't need, like, nobody owes you anything. And that's mm -hmm. what I say. You don't feel an obligation. You know, I want you to the, say that looking in the camera because people think you owe them a lot. You no, know, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you know, nobody owes you. It's, they're not your fathers. They're not your parents. You know, it's not their obligation. We are just here to help out, and or whoever is out there to help out. It's your job. So your talent is your passport. Mm -hmm. Harness it. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in a great position for somebody to come and say, okay, cool, this is good enough and I can get it. Mm. It's very competitive out there. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to come on a silver plate. And stop wasting a lot of time on the internet. It's not going to happen there. That whole energy that you're taking, insulting people and complaining and whining, mm. you can take that energy into practicing, take it in the studio, make some records, mm. you know, impress me. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I want. I don't want you to make noise, impress me. Mm. Let me go like, wow, like the way AC impressed me. Like, listen, we're always going to discover talent. Yeah, that's true. The way I discovered Neil, you know, it's not It's not like AC came to me. And this is how I discovered AC. I was, I was on... Uh, I was on Instagram and T-Boy posted something of AC. He was playing something on the keyboard. Mm. And it seems like this guy's got a very good vocal range and he can play the keyboard pretty mm. well. Then I discovered that he did a song with T-Shawn. Then I started looking him up. Mm. I went to YouTube, I typed in AC and I, mm. I'm like, this guy is good. Then I found his number, then I called him mm. when I was working on my albums. Like, you know, I'd like to do a song with you mm -hmm. because I liked what I heard. Mm. Same thing with Natasha Chansa. I heard mm. what she was doing. I was like, this girl was fresh. Mm. You know, she's got a new sound. Lungy, mm. same thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's got a different sound. Like, these are people that never came to me. Mm. I came to them. Nice. So I always say, position yourself because we are watching. True. We are watching. The industry is watching. Just position yourself. You know, sometimes True. you don't necessarily have to, like, always back somebody. Mm. And unfortunately, most of the times, the people that are bagging you are the ones that don't really... It's like, it's just, yeah. the stuff is like very lukewarm. Like, it's like, this is not good enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you put yourself in a good position, then people are going to find you. Yeah. I like what you're saying because it's the same thing that Fireboy said. Yeah. He, did, he, he was doing an interview with MTV and the interviewer asked him to say, uh, I talked to a lot of upcoming artists and most of them uh, complain about being denied to perform at yeah. a like, big event. Yeah. So what was it like for you? And for him, he said, honestly, I didn't have time for that because I was always in the studio perfecting my craft. Yeah. Not until Olamide called me and yeah. said, I, I, you know, I think I can work with you. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's really good that's advice it. to everybody out there. Just position go, yourself. Yeah, position yourself. Go in the studio. Listen, when you're talented, and this is the truth, when you're talented, no matter what nobody does, my friend, when you are destined to do it, it's like mm -hmm. you, like, you know, you've been hustling. Mm. Now you're becoming a household name. You know, mm. you, you, you are just like, when you're starting off, it's like a ah, little girl coming up. And, but when you're on the come up, nobody's going to ignore you. People are going to see your works like, this girl, man, she's coming. Mm. And you are coming. <laughs> Thank you. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you are coming and you're going to continue coming until people are like, oh my goodness, this girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. So when something is destined to happen, nobody's going to block your shine. And that's mm. what I always say. If it's your time and it's coming, just keep perfecting your art. Stay off social media. It's not going to help you. Mm. That ranting, and it's not going to help you. Mm. You're going to grow old ranting, and that's mm -hmm. all it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? So make some time and just go perfect your art. That's what we did. 
okay. know, we went in the studio, we learned, we learned from the best, we kept on working hard, and that's why we're here today. Mm. Because it was work. We didn't go on social media and making noise like, oh, you know, our predecessors, oh, TK, you're not helping us. Oh, Shan Shanoko, you should give us a chance, mm. you know. And I, this, here's an example that I gave, you know. Um, like for example, the Stanbic, uh, like there was a time I was like, I was thinking to myself, like I didn't complain about it, like the Stanbic festive, mm -hmm. you know, like I've been emceeing for quite a while. I was like, and I said, you know what, I would like to emcee one of those, mm -hmm. but I feel like they're using people that have been doing this for a very, long, very time. long time. But I never saw to it, I never said, oh no, but I feel like it's our generation, we should be the one doing that or whatever, mm. whatever. I just feel like, okay, when the time comes, <clears throat> maybe it will come at the time, maybe I'm 45 and maybe it's like, okay, no, I think now KD is, is, is going to Don't sulk about things. I mean, we can also mm. sit here and complain and say, ah, how come those opportunities are not coming to us? Mm. Me, for example, sorry, I'm taking a lot of time. For me, for example, I'll give <laughs> an example. There are so many people that came before me, mm -hmm. okay? So I've been there for a long time. The people that started getting endorsement deals and getting, you know, bigger things than me. And I sat down and I thought to myself, why are all these opportunities passing me when I feel like I have done a lot of work? And you know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's like, it's probably just not your time. And maybe, yes, you've been there. But the guy that was behind you has made so much impact in that mm -hmm. moment that they feel like that's the right brand and you know, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the way you feel, I felt like that before. I felt like I've, I've done quite a bit for the industry. Why, do I, why don't I get that recognition? Why don't I also get those endorsement deals? Why don't I get this? Why don't I get it? You know, here I am now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not like I went knocking and said, hey, Nexus, make me the CEO of this company or you know what I'm saying? I mean. You know, they can't it's, know kids. Yeah, it's somebody that you know has been watching my moves and been watching what I do and just thought, you know what, I think KB is the right person because I've seen you do this, this, mm -hmm. you know, and I, you know, you've you've managed artists and I feel like you'll be the right person to do this and you know what I'm saying and everything just falls in place after that. Mm -hmm. So my advice is that just keep working, mm -hmm. keep working. It's like any other job, perfect it, and you're gonna go up the rank and you know things are gonna happen for you. Because there's a new generation. Our generation is gonna be done. I mean, like production wise, it's almost done. <laughs> You know, so there are new kids like Kid Soldier. There's, you know, all these kids are coming in. So in the next five years, so there's going to be another. Another Kid Soldier. Group, in you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, that is going to continue until we're just going to be old grandpas and just watching like, oh, things have changed. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right. Thank you once yeah. again. I really appreciate it because you're always finding time for me. Man. Yeah, like, not a problem. You don't give me a hard time. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. I mean, you know, yeah, no, I try. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't want nobody to complain that I can't be out of shoot. I should fuck on Babadi. Ah, no who tell them that. Try to find time. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. If you have any more questions, hit us up in the comment section. I've been your girl, Idiot, and the people's babe. Bye.